Hi, so so far we have learned about the centrifugal force, the Kepler's laws. In the third law of Kepler we have studied that T square is directly proportional to R cube where T is called as a period or it is the time required by the object to complete one revolution around the sun and R is the mean distance of the planet from the sun. Okay, And we have also seen the universal law of gravitation. What is that? The law states F is equal to, that is the gravitational force is equal to G into M1 into M2 upon D square. Okay, Where M1 and M2 are the masses of the two objects and D is the distance between the two objects. Okay, Now, if in this universal law of gravitation, if we consider the masses of the two objects as constant, G is already constant. So the only term which remains is d square. Okay, If I remove the constant terms, only the proportionality sign will remain and I'll get F is inversely proportional to d square. Okay, The gravitational force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the objects. Now, how did Newton arrive at this conclusion that force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance? Now, Newton used the Kepler's laws as well as the formula for the centrifugal force to arrive at this conclusion. Let us see how he did it. Now, in circular motion, if you consider the mass of the object as m and it is moving with a velocity v, also the radius of the circular path or the distance of the object from the center is to be taken as r then the centripetal force is given by the formula F is equal to mv square upon r. Now we know that v is the velocity and how do we calculate the velocity? It is the distance travelled upon time. Now as the object is moving in a circular path, right? so the total distance travelled will be the circumference of the circle. The circumference is given by the formula 2 pi r and the time taken for one revolution is denoted by T, capital T, in the Kepler's third law as well. Okay, So, V will be equal to 2 pi r upon T. Now, substituting this value of V in the above equation, what we will get is this. Now, squaring that term and simplifying, I should get F is equal to 4m pi square r as one of the r gets cancelled upon T square. Now, if you look carefully at this equation and Kepler's third law, we already have t square but we does not have r cube. In the numerator, we just have 1 r. To make it as r cube, I need to multiply it by r square. So multiplying and dividing this formula by r square, what we will get is 4m pi square r cube upon r square into t square. Now if you take r cube and t square aside, I can substitute this value as 1 by k using the Kepler's third law. So the equation becomes 4m pi square upon r square k. Now if you look at all the terms in the formula that is 4 is a constant, mass of the object which remains constant during the motion, pi is a constant and k is also a constant. So if you remove all the constant terms we will get the proportionality sign and we'll be just left with r square. Hence, f will be inversely proportional to r square. And what is r? r is the distance of the object from the center. Or if we consider a planetary motion, it is the distance between the planet and the sun. So r is nothing but the distance between the objects. And this is how Newton arrived at the conclusion that force between two objects or you can say gravitational force between two objects is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. Now, make a note of these important formulas we have learned so far.